This is the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 5 disassembly. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. To start off, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look at that. Now heat needs to be applied to the outer screen and bottom glass to loosen up the adhesive underneath and then a pry tool can be used to pry them off. The screen can now be lifted over, but be careful since the cable is still attached to the main board. Once the plastic cover over the connector has been removed, the cable can be disconnected. On the other side of the back plate or back glass, there is graphite film to help transfer heat. On the back of the outer screen, there is some more graphite film to help transfer heat, as well as copper tape behind the screen. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and prying them off so you won't need to take apart the phone to replace those. There are 16 Phillips screws which need to be removed. The battery cables cannot be disconnected, followed by the rest of the cables. Here's a better look at the plastic cover with the LED flash cable on it. The main board is a multi-layer board design. There's a 12 megapixel main and ultra wide lens. The main camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. There is also a secondary microphone. The SIM reader is located on the other side, as well as the connectors for the cameras, which can be disconnected by just popping them off. The proximity sensor is located here and there is a graphite pad on the back shields to help transfer heat. Once the graphite pad has been peeled back, we can see a thermal pad which sits on top of the RAM and processor. There are some more thermal pads on top of this battery to help transfer heat. And to remove this battery, there's a pull pouch provided to help you pry the battery off. Here's a better look at the 1000 mAh battery.
This is the 5G millimeter wave antenna. This flex cable is for the light sensor over here. And this one is for the fingerprint reader and power button. If you want to remove that, you need to lift up and remove the rubber gasket from inside of the slot in the frame. Here's a better look at that. There's a 3D layer of graphite underneath the motherboard to help transfer heat. And the 10 megapixel front facing camera is glued in place with a cure in place gasket. So if you wanted to replace that, you would need to use a razor or a sharp tool to cut the glue around the camera and gently pry it off. The top earpiece speaker is located here and is held down with some adhesive. There's also a rubber gasket and mesh filter or the microphone opening on top. The flex cable for the volume keys is located here. And in order to replace that, you have to gently peel off the flex cable and pull out and remove the plastic bracket from the slot in the frame. Here's a look at the wireless charging coil and NFC antenna. And this is the bottom speaker assembly. If you needed to replace the inner folding screen, you'd have to remove the back glass, the screws on the bottom cover and speaker assembly, and remove the cover and speaker assembly themselves, disconnect the battery cable, remove the wireless charging coil, and then disconnect this flex cable which connects the screen cable to the main board, at which point you'd be able to peel off the screen cable from the frame. You'd then have to flip the phone over, and then you'd heat up and pry off the plastic border, as well as heat up the folding screen and pry the folding screen off. Next, you'd apply a new adhesive and reapply the new screen, making sure you run the flex cable back through the opening in the mid frame and reassemble the foam. To remove the battery on the bottom, there's also another pull pouch provided to help you pry it off. Here's a look at a 2700 milliamp hour battery. Now onto the subboard. There are two Phillips screws which are holding it down. There's a red rubber gasket around the charger port and the primary microphone is located over here. Here's a look at the other side of the subboard. There's another rubber gasket and mesh filter over the microphone opening on the bottom, and it's seated above the hole or opening on the frame. So if you happen to accidentally put the sim ejector tool in the wrong hole, you won't damage it. Now there is a second hole next to the primary hole for the microphone, 
And I'm not sure if that's just the secondary hole or channel, just in case the first one gets clogged, but that's just my guess. The vibrator motor is located on the bottom as well, and it's held down with some adhesive. The flex cable which connects the bottom assembly to the top assembly is held in place with a cure in place gasket. So it's pretty much sealed on both sides to help prevent dust, debris, or water from getting inside. I'm not going to pry off the folding screen since I don't want to risk damaging it. There's a high chance of damaging the folding screen when prying it off, and you'd need to reapply the original pre-cut adhesive for the folding screen on the inside to hold it in place properly so when folding the screen it doesn't crack or get damaged. Since I don't have those adhesives, I'm not going to take the risk prying it off. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 7.5 out of 10. Now it's time to reassemble the phone. Once everything's back in place, power on the phone and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.